Man Coast Railroad goes back as far as 1890, when a system of two-foot gauge tracks was introduced to the gravel pits. However, in the 1960s, the network included standard gauge lines to all the various industries served or operated by Manco, Reliable Exhibition Demolition and Builders League United, with a main line linking it all together. Manco was very proud of their railroad and produced a series of short films with the intention of showing their empire to the world. Our feature begins at Manhattan Docks, that's man with two ends. One of the imported locomotives, known to the Manco Railroad as John Bulls, pulls in with a boat train. The letters on the locomotive's tender are cast metal. On the quayside, another imported switcher makes a quick getaway. These locomotives were known as Prestons. Another Preston is seen alongside a Manco original, the class DMS-5. Despite dwarfing the Preston, the DMS-5s were not a success, and they were always drawn within 10 years of their introduction. Our next location is in Manhattan itself, more specifically Well Depot. The stoker of this steam switcher generously provided our cameraman with a footplate ride. Due to legal reasons, we cannot disclose how Manco acquired this design of steam switcher. The same goes for this absolutely colossal duplex 4444. It might look like a Pennsylvania T1 to the untrained eye, but Manco assures it's a completely different design. It's passed by a John Bull, which the duplex was supposed to replace. In the end, the design proved unreliable, and both types were replaced by diesels. Hanging out at the back of the depot was the original Manco number one. Number one had long been withdrawn when this feature was filmed, and she was scrapped in 1968. Manhattan Central, even on the quiet days, was a hub of activity. A 460, devoid of name and number plates, comes in. Wrong road. The reason for the wrong roading can be seen to the right. A dead Preston. The 460 is filthy, typical of the end of Manco steam. The Manhattan Main Line provides an excellent location to see the Manco fleet hard at work. An MC3 diesel is up first, powering a container freight away from the docks. A double header, this time a pair of John Bulls. These shots perfectly showcase why the duplex locomotives were built. Up next is one of Builders League United's own locos. She's showing her age. It must have been the last of her type by the time these shots were filled. Blue and Red had their own designated locomotives. One of Red's own duplexes careers on by, with a train from the Tufa branch. A blue duplex in the opposite direction. The train is noticeably shorter than the one held by the John Bulls. Another diesel hauled freight, this time a gravel train. Return Ocean Liner Express. The diesel locomotives hauling it are of the type introduced to replace the duplexes. However, their introduction was not as smooth as envisioned, and they suffered many mechanical failures. A Manco switcher tows a dead example, bound for the two foot branch. The two-foot branch itself was one of the most important along the system. A totally original Manco 060 rumbles past with one of the short, infrequent passenger trains. The single line branch was notorious for delays due to sheep on the line. The remains of a fence can be seen in the background. The branch was on a gradient out of two-foot. Our feature concludes with the most modern form of traffic, as a liner diesel climbs the line with a container freight. But it looks like the mighty diesel still needs help from one of Manco's finest, as a banking John Bull lets the diesel take the strain. And for those wondering, this is why I don't use the American carriages. <laughs>